here at the Snake Keeper again, and today, what are we going to talk about? Today we're going to talk about brumation, specifically for our Colubrid collection. Why? Because you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> you wanted to know, so we're going to go over that a little bit. Mostly it's going to be summer going through it, because I'm going to kidnap my wife and we're going to run out <laughs> and go do something else. So... We'll let Summer run you through it. We do things a little bit different than some people. We kind of move things around, and she'll explain how we move things around and how long it goes on, and I think there's a few more things you're going to talk about. Yeah. So we're going to kind of move around the building, so we'll probably have some cuts, and you'll appear in different rooms, but the master of video, Josh, that's holding that camera on the other side, will take care of all of that for us. Yep. Okay, Summer, what exactly is brumation? Um, yeah, a lot of people actually ask that. So brumation is similar in some ways to hibernation, which I believe is the common um, thing that most people think of when they hear the word brumation. There are differences, though. Hibernation is uh, for warm-blooded animals, and brumation is for cold-blooded animals, which are your reptiles. Um, so there's other differences as well. Hibernation is a true hibernation where um, obviously the one I think of, most people will think of, is the bears. Uh, they like to hibernate and they just sit there like they're dead basically. <laughs> and uh, the snakes actually, so they brumate and they're not actually laying there just like they're dead. They do sleep but they also do drink water while they're in there. Um, they don't eat or anything like that. They will sometimes shed still, occasionally, while they're in there. But their metabolism just slows down a lot, which is exactly like hibernation. Um, so that's why there's kind of a lot of similarities there. <laughs> How do we prepare for brumation? Yeah, great question. So when winter starts coming here in Utah, things start cooling down in the fall. And so typically, we like to put our snakes into brumation at Halloween, so the end of October. Um, and so we start prepping actually a couple weeks before that, so usually mid-October. And what we do is we start weaning these guys off of food. And we do that so that they can clear out their systems. Because when their metabolism, metabolism slows down that much and their temperature drops, they don't digest the same way. And so we want them to get everything out before we move them into the cold room. And so mid-October, we start um, getting them off of food. And then they kind of just uh, sit there for the next two weeks. We'll unplug the racks that they're in because um, we do switch cages when we brewmate. And so we unplug the racks so that they can start slowly losing some temperature. Um, the room still probably stays above 70 degrees year-round. So they don't drop a lot, but it's just gradual, kind of starts getting them to be like, oh, okay, it's that time of year. And then we move them from their original cages into their new cages that they'll sit in for the next three months about. And so what we do is we go ahead and we actually use these racks right here. These are actually our baby ball python racks, but we've now repurposed them for uh, colubrids. And, but they work really well. Um, so they hold 70 snakes, and uh, they are small, but when these guys are in brumation, they don't move. They literally just stay in one spot pretty much the whole time. So they just need space for water um, and themselves, of course. So we use this for all the king snakes and corn snakes and uh, milk snakes. All of our bigger stuff, like the pituophis, they go in uh, bigger cages. Um, V35s is what they sit in. And so... We'll prep those cages, and then when it's time, so a couple days before Halloween, we'll move everybody, transfer them all over, and then we'll reel them into the brumation room. So you said this is where we usually keep our king snakes and other colubrids, but the cages are empty. These are the original cages that the snakes will sit in um, during you know, spring, summer, and then into fall. So they only, um, so they're never in here in the winter time. What's nice about the fact that we do move them, um, and this is one reason why we do it. There's a couple reasons. 
One reason why we do move them though is because it does allow us to give a deep clean to these cages. So we were able to clean these like really well. You can see they're actually very clean. So we give them a super clean when uh, the snakes aren't in the cage anymore. And it allows us to clean things very nicely, which um, is always good to get it cleaned every once in a while. Um, the other reason that we move them is just to save on space. Um, as you can see, so this right here I think is nine racks. Um, these hold 11 in each rack and that only, or is there eight? There's eight. There's eight. Um, and so that's only space for 88 snakes, which that would take up a lot of room. We don't have that much space in the brumation room, which is why we like to use these other racks behind us because they hold 70. It makes it much more manageable for us and saves on a lot of space for those reasons. We do change the substrate that they're on. Um, right now, this is actually a male's cage, um, and all the males we leave on cardboard year-round. It just makes it easier for breeding purposes and everything, keeping it cleaner, um, so shavings don't cause problems. Um, but we use liners for when we put them in uh, brumation, um, because it keeps things cleaner, um, and it's just easier to clean them, basically. There's not a lot of reasons why we do that specifically. Um, only the king snakes, milk snakes, and corn snakes go on the liners. The ones that they're actually on look like this. Um, so there's these white ones, but they're half the size. And they're just really lightweight material. These are our quick liners that we have. We sell them on tsksupply.com. So yeah, these are the liners that we like to use uh, for brumation. Um, they're really convenient, nice, easy to clean up after. And these are the ones that we actually leave all these other king snakes in these V35s. We leave all them on liners year round too. It uh, just makes it easier, less of a mess to clean up. Any of the bigger ones though, we do leave on this shredded aspen uh, because I want to. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only other difference is, is we'll show you when we get in there is the bigger snakes, the Pituophis, we do put them on Aspen as well. Um, so they're more of a burrowing kind of snake. Um, and we like to give them a little more substrate that they can dig around in while they're sitting in brumation, so. Okay, all right, you wanna lead or you want me to lead? Sure, I'll lead. Okay, lead us out. Here we go, we're going to the brumation room. Um, yeah, so the target range that we want to keep them in for brumation, um, I prefer them at least at 55 or even a little lower, no lower than 50 degrees though, otherwise it's getting a little dangerous, um, but we try and keep ours as close to 55 as possible. Um, that just helps them go through their cycle as best they can. And uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and go in there now. So yeah, this is the little office that we do use for brumation. Um, as you can see, it is pretty small in here, um, which is why we have to condense and use these smaller cages so that we can fit everybody in this room. Um, hopefully our collection doesn't grow much more, otherwise we're gonna run out of space. But, uh, so these are those two racks I was talking about. Um, these are actually some old school racks that we've had for, gosh, I don't know, 20 years probably or something. Um, but we'll just wheel this around here so we can take a, a good look at everybody. So when these guys are in brumation, since we do switch their cages, a lot of people might be wondering, well, how do you know which snake goes back in which cage? Um, we have a numbering system. As you can see, all the cages have numbers on them, which correlate with the number on their um, original cage in the snake room. That way that nothing gets put back in their own cage, which would be a little weird. <laughs> but uh, that's how we keep track of all of these guys, is just using numbers and haven't had any problems so far. So anyways, we just kind of gave these guys water again. We always make sure that they have some water while they're in here. Um, but yeah, they probably don't really like the light right now, but uh, they really just sit there. They don't really act like king snakes, like, most people would normally associate king snakes 
with uh, they, they're not flighty at all they just kind of sit still very sluggish so anyways um, and then these are the uh, these are the pituophis as you can see as I said we do keep them on shavings so that they can burrow some if they feel like it that's all they really need uh, is just water and substrate basically so when they're in this room they're kind of out of the way you don't see them every day how long do you go between checking them to give them new water oh yeah good question um so obviously since it is a lot colder of a room they don't run out of water quite so fast <laughs> snake room they do um in here i usually check them every about two weeks and i usually just run in here and i check a couple different i check a couple different cages depending on uh well, I usually check a couple cages from every single rack just to make sure that I'm covering all my bases. Um, and so it usually it's like every two weeks, uh, depending on like if it's Christmas week, I'm, I may or may not miss. <laughs> usually doing stuff with the family instead. Um, but yeah, they don't have to be checked super often. And they do stay in here from Halloween until I think this year we said that we were going to take them out at Valentine's Day. So mid-February is when we're going to start warming them back up. So when we do that, we're just going to wheel all these racks into the snake room. And then we'll leave them in these cages for a couple days. And then we'll put them back into their original cages. And then we'll plug in those racks. And then they'll warm up all the way. And then we'll start offering food. And the season will get rolling from there. So we have done brumation every year since we got colubrids, but it's only our adults mm -hmm. that we have brumating and not the babies. So why is it important just to have the adults brumating? Brumating. <laughs> um, so uh, sometimes babies actually do uh, occasionally go through a sort of brumation as well. And they can if you want them to. Um, we don't brumate any of our younger stuff because we want to feed it uh, throughout those three months so that they can grow um, That's why we don't do it, but they can also brumate. So uh, the adults brumate um, in our collection specifically because We think that it helps with their reproduction um, Not everybody brumates and they can still uh, get um, healthy fertile clutches from their animals, but we do believe in brumating um, they go through uh, this period of time and their bodies are able to cycle and then conserve energy because they slow down so much that they're able to conserve that energy throughout those three months and then come back out and then be able to produce. Um, so in some ways people believe that it helps save that energy so that they will be able to produce eggs. Um, some people don't think it's necessary. Um, Others have also stated that the it's important for males also because it helps their sperm stay viable um, because it regulates however it's supposed to regulate. Um, I have had snakes last year of my own personal collection that I did not brumate that, because I wanted them to grow more and I tried breeding them anyway because they were a big enough size and they did produce a healthy 14 egg clutch for me, which was great. Um, so I would say that it's not necessary, but it is something that most um, reptiles are gonna do. Um, at least in our room, they all, even if we don't bring them in this room, they will go through the cycle on their own. They'll stop eating and they will just sit in their hide box or wherever they might go, a corner in their cage, and they'll just show no interest at all. Um, which is them doing their own sort of brumation and they could do that for whatever reason for us It's important because we believe that it's actually helped our reproduction um, Numbers be better last year. We obviously had um, I think a new record for how many clutches that we've gotten and um, Fertile eggs I think was the big thing so because of that that's why we brumate and we just want to be successful, get lots of healthy eggs. Now, quick thing. 
we have another video either out or coming out about our incubators that we have built. This is the same room that the other incubator has been built in. So if you'd want to hear more about that, then also comment down below about our built-in room incubator and hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want to know when we put out our videos, turn on your notifications. Ha ha ha!